the apostle Paul, it had that scripture had no punch to it. It had no, it had no potency to it after he finished criticizing or uh, 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 you know dissecting it. Amen. Amen. But this Amen. First Corinthians 11, when Paul says, you know, speaking about the communion, Paul said that we need to examine ourselves. But some, they sleep, they die. They have gotten sick and they have died because they didn't properly deserve the body and the blood of Christ. They didn't deserve it. Amen. And Amen. he said, we need to examine ourselves. Why would he say we need to examine ourselves if, if we didn't need to make sure our hearts were right before God, that our motives were pure before God, before taking communion? Amen. Why would he say Amen. to examine, that we need to examine ourselves? Amen. We Amen. have to, yes, 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 yes. We have to examine ourselves. Make sure that we're in proper fellowship with him. Amen. 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 That's the Bible. That's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what the Holy Bible teaches. Let's look at, um, let's look at 2 Timothy real quick. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy um, 1, 2 Timothy 1, and we we closing after a while. Let's see, 2 Timothy 1, uh, what verse we want to look at? Ninth, start with the ninth verse. First chapter, and we're going to start with the ninth verse. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. It says, for, for it is he who, does, to, who delivered and saved us and called us with a calling in itself. Holy! Amen. Now, this Man. is the Apostle Paul again. This is the Apostle of Grace. This is the chief Apostle of Grace. Everybody, you know, it's Paul, the Apostle Paul saying that, for it is he who delivered us, delivered and saved us, and called us with a calling in itself. Holy and leading to holiness, to a life of consecration. Amen. Amen. A life of consecration. So that when they, if you're talking about a life of con consecration, that means you're talking about living, Amen. right? You're talking Amen. about living. Amen. What you do when you're living? When you're living this life, this is what you. This is what you focus on. This is what you do when you're living this life. It says in. It says, uh, calling it itself holy and leading to holiness to a life of consecration. A, a vocation of holiness. He did it. Not because of anything of merit that we have done, but and it's not about what we've done. That's why we have to live by the grace of God. We Amen. live by the Amen. grace of God. We're Amen. living by faith. Our faith. We're living by faith in God. And we're living by the grace of God. You know, but it's a cooperation here. Amen. It's a cooperation. It's something that we have to cooperate with. Yeah. We have to be submitted to God. He says he resists the proud. The Lord in James, the book of James, what we're going to do with this scripture. He said he, the Lord, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He gives grace to the humble. You mean tell me Christian folk don't walk in pride from time to time? Amen. Come on now. You never had to repent from pride, being proud, thinking that you're better than other people, looking down on other people, mistreating those around you. Never, you never mistreated people around you. Amen. And had to repent. Come on, man. Let's be real with it. Let's preach the truth of the Bible. Hallelujah. Let's, let's preach the truth. Let's don't take grace beyond what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then it says here, it says, uh, yeah, it says, he did it not because of anything of merit that we have done, but because of and to further his own purpose and grace, a merited favor, which was given us in Christ. Jesus before, in Christ Jesus before the world began, eternal ages ago. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is that purpose and grace which he now has made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our 
our Savior Christ Jesus, who annulled death and made it of no effect and brought life and immortality, immunity from eternal death to life through the gospel. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's Amen. a lot. But the word of God is right. Amen. Amen. We got to settle the issue. The word is right. Don't take, don't take the grace. That's so precious. Don't, don't cause me to, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't even want to think ill toward the grace of God because it's so awesome. Amen. Amen. But when I hear people misuse it and, and they exaggerate it and stuff, it, it's grieving. It's grieving. Yeah. Amen. It's yeah. grieving. It's, you know, you start getting to the point where you say, well, ain't no hell. There's no hell. Everybody universalism, you know. Everybody, nobody's going to have to, you know, what kind of God? You know, some people say, what kind of God? Well, people put people in hell. You know, well, the same God that, that flooded the earth during Noah's day. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the same God. Hallelujah. That sent a flood. The same God that sent ten plagues. Hallelujah to the, to the Egyptian people that were afflicting the people of Israel, the children of Israel. Amen? Amen. He's a God of love. He's a God of grace. And he's a God of justice. Yeah. He's a God of mercy, but he's a God of justice as well. Amen? Amen. That's what kind of God we serve. Amen? Amen. The same God of grace is a God that's, that you, if people don't get saved, they don't get right with God, that they're going to hell. That's what he says. That's what he said in the word. And then the Lord, he corrected the seven churches in Revelation. Why would he correct the church of Laodicea? Why would he correct all these different churches in Revelations if they didn't need to repent? Amen. Amen. If they, did, if they had it all together already. Why would he bring correction? Why would he tell the church of Laodicea, when you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Amen? And, and he was talking to Christians when he said, I stand at the door and knock. He said, I stand at the door and knock. He was talking to Christian people. Amen? Amen? Why would he say that? If we already had it all together. Amen? Amen. So I want... Uh, my desire is that we really just meditate and pray to the Lord. You mean concerning this message and concerning study about the grace of God. Study about anything, any scripture I quoted, study. Amen. Study Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. Study 1 Timothy 2, 12 through 16. Titus. Amen. Titus says the grace of God in the second chapter. Let's read that for in closing. In closing, I'm going to read this. I'm going to close with this. Let's read what Titus says. Titus says in the second chapter, and we know God is a word. When we, like I said earlier, that grace is God's divine enablement. Amen. Amen. His divine power. Amen. His divine, I mean, to, to assist us to live this impossible life. We cannot live in constant obedience without the grace of God. Amen. Amen. But we do have to choose to obey. Right? Amen. 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 But in, in closing, in closing this morning, let's go to Titus 2.11. I might have to read the 10th chapter. Um, a 10th verse, I don't know why I'm talking about some chapter. Anyway, it says, um, let me look at the 10th verse, put a little context to it. Nor to stealing by taking things of small value, but to prove themselves truly loyal and entirely reliable and faithful throughout. So that, now this is the apostle Paul now, the apostle, the great apostle. He says, and entirely re re reliable and faithful throughout, so that in everything they may be and ornament and do credit and do credit to the teaching which is from the and about God our say Look at this where I want to focus on real hard. The other verse says, For the grace of God, for the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward, appeared for the deliverance from sin. Amen. Amen. The deliverance from sin. 
and the eternal salvation for all mankind. It has trained us. What has trained us? The grace of God. The Amen. grace of God has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness. Amen. It's trained us to reject and renounce. So we don't, we, since we've been saved, we've never walked in ungodliness. We've never sinned since we've been saved. Amen. So Amen. We, if we, if we have, because First John said, if we say we haven't sinned, then we, we're liars. Amen. And so, so since we have sinned, we, you know, we have to renounce. You know, we have to repent and renounce ungodliness Amen. and that irreligion and worldly passion, passionate desires to live discreet, temperate, self-control, upright, devout, spiritual, whole, spiritually whole, and live in this present world. Amen. Amen. Read it again, 12th verse. It has trained us to reject and renounce all oh, the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God has taught us, amen, trained us to reject and renounce all oh, ungodliness. Amen. 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 It's taught us and trained us to reject all oh, ungodliness, irreligion, and worldly passion. Amen. Passionate desires to live discreet, temperate, self control upright, devout, spiritually holy lives in this present world. We're living our lives every day in closing. We're living our lives every day. Amen. We're Amen. living this life. We're walking with Him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Paul again. That's Paul again. It's in the Bible. The, he said the body, rather, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 That the Holy Spirit lives in us. And he said we defile the temple, then we will what? Be destroyed ourselves if we defile, if we practice that life. Amen. Amen. So we are free moral agents and we can make a decision to do right and do wrong. Amen. We must repent. Amen. We're not going to lose our salvation because we miss it every once in a while. Whatever. Amen. But we have to know that we are not forgiven of past, present, and future sins. Amen? Amen. We, are, we, we have to go to God and repent. But we have practiced unrighteousness. We have practiced it. And we know we don't got it wrong with God. And we don't got a lot of fellowship. We need to repent. Thank you. I hope you all receive that word. I hope you get something like you got something rather out of that word. Think about it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. God, we give you all glory, honor, and praises for your word, Father. Lord, help us to take your word, Father, and live by your word, Lord. We repent, Lord, Father. We ask forgiveness, Lord, for, for not handling your word properly, Lord God. Pray, Lord, for my brothers, Lord God, and my sisters, Lord God, to just preach your word and preach your word. Help us all to preach your truth, your unadulterated gospel. Hallelujah. The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace. Help us to preach it right, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're not saved today, this is the time you can be saved. Hallelujah. Scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Amen. So today could be your day. If you want to get saved today, if you want to experience this life, of salvation, a life of walking and talking and, and moving and living and having your being in God, just repeat after me right now. Say, Father, forgive me for all of my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died for me and that you were buried for me and on the third day you rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart right now. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you so much for saving me. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, you just got saved. Congratulations to you. And I just want to thank everybody for sharing the word with us today. Have a blessed day and week in Jesus' name. Amen.